Okay, so toilet's hooked up. Problem is, I'm not sure why it keeps telling me it needs to be emptied. All I did was put in the mulching material. Let's see? That's it. That's all that's in there. I haven't even used it. Nothing. But the little indicator light that says it needs to be emptied hasn't shut off. But I have a functioning toilet in the meantime. So I don't know if it's because I maybe bumped a wire or something because I was also doing some stuff up top. So I was hoping to get rid of this board because I showed you guys like the whole mess of wires that's under there. I did bundle them up so they're not quite such a mess <coughs> and then grouped them in because this section right here has got a bigger dugout basically where all of those connectors are. But it's not a junction box. It's just the way it was when I got it. And because everything is stretched out so much, I would have to restring everything to get it into a single junction box. And then it would just be a, a random box, like kind of just right there. So I put it all back together for now, obviously. This was actually because of a boo-boo that happened with that outlet because while I was trying to put this board back in, apparently they had one screw that was right under the corner of that junction box, which is for the 120. Um, that's the box I put in to reorganize what was originally there. Because it was just laying in underneath right here, which is really unsafe. So I put it in a box. Box is grounded. It's got the uh, plastic insulator on this side where all the wires run into the box. But while I was putting this board down, um, I accidentally screwed into that 120 line that runs from the junction box into the outlet. So I had to pull the whole thing apart. And I had to do this like three times today, four technically. Pulled the whole thing apart, stripped out what was there because I realized that even though it did trip a breaker, or at least I thought it did. Um, once I went and replaced everything and put it all back together, I still wasn't getting power. And it turns out it was actually where I was plugged in at. That it was my um, plug-in location that's out under the tree. It was actually that one that tripped. So that's fine because it's actually running on like 15 amp where my breakers are running on 20. So that one tripped before the trailer did. Either way, it's fine. Um, there was only a little scorch mark, but I went ahead and pulled it, replaced it, put it all back together, went outside, flipped the breaker. Of course, after dad pointed out that that might be why I wasn't getting power for a little bit because I was so hyper-focused on that outlet and everything I just did, I neglected to check any other locations because that's plugged in with the outlet. So I hadn't checked any of the other spots. So of course, you know, it always takes a outsider looking in to go, um, did you check the, <laughs> and then you go, oh yeah, I was so focused on where I was working. I forgot to even check to see if the rest of the house even had power. So got that figured out. This was the other project that I had been working on a little bit yesterday. And I may forego doing the glow in the dark on this section. I haven't decided yet. I've got 50% of the tree done, but because the paint that I was painting with isn't scheduled to arrive until the 13th. Well, I got a little impatient. I really wanted to see how this was going to look for the railing and how well it would blend in to the rest of the tree. So I went ahead and decided to go ahead and just do it, you know, just go ahead and put it in. So as of right now, um, the electrical is finished. Actually, the other thing my dad helped me with, just because I was having a little trouble identifying exactly what the culprit was with this one, because I had that new light that I showed you guys before that I had just ordered and I had it pulled apart a second time because I wasn't getting the appropriate amount of power coming through it on a 12 volt. That one's still going to get cut off and recessed into the wall and siliconed off because that one doesn't work anyway. But I don't have the correct bulb for this yet. So those are coming tomorrow. Once I have that light bulb in, then 
I can use the label maker because I only just started that when I ran into that issue so that I can finish labeling the 12 volt fuses and the 120 circuit breakers because nothing on this is correct and they're in the wrong spot. They don't even line up with the correct fuses for where they're labeled. And because I added the toilet, then there's an extra number four is where it actually controls the toilet and one of the other lights. So I did find out by pulling my number five that it actually shuts off power for the kitchen as well. So I still got to do some identifying, but at least I can get it labeled so I know which parts of the house shut off for each breaker and each fuse and I'll get them labeled accordingly down on the bottom to clean that up and have it properly labeled because the only thing they did was even put any marks on for the 12 volt. They never even marked any of the breakers. So use that fancy little label maker and I'll finish, finish getting some more of these printed out. Um, I really beat the crap out of myself though having to take apart that wiring and put it back together so many times because it really sucks they put the outlet that close to the floor that they actually had to cut a groove into their color their cover board that goes there over the wiring to even have a way to cover it all up but because it's so close to the floor it means a lot of hunching over and fighting with that corner and of course that's the side I have the most issue with so it's been a real pleasant day today so in the meantime, I'm going to work on trying to get the bathroom cleaned out because the next prog project that I really want to be working on, I need to get all of my equipment and leftover materials out, finish getting the toilet mounted, finish putting in the um, hole that needs to go into the cupboard, and then run down with the rest of the lines, punch a hole through the floor, get me some mesh on the end of that so that I don't have any critters or bugs trying to crawl in it. And that is for the exhaust fan, which runs constantly. You can probably hear it. So then that way I can use the toilet when I'm in here and you're not supposed to have to dump these maybe once or twice a month. So, or not twice a month, but like once every other month. Um, Sorry, I needed to reset the fridge because, of course, I did all the breakers and everything. And I didn't reset the fridge, so it wasn't um, powered on yet. No, I don't want you to use gas. Anyway, so I'm going to get all of this cleaned out because I'm going to grab the Thompson's water seal and I'm going to seal all of the wood in the bathroom because I don't want to have any issue with um, the wood being too absorbent after taking a shower or doing anything in here that would create more moisture. And being as this is also going to double as my mudrooms considering that this has the back door on it, um, I really just don't want to have any issue with water. Um, it's going to make the wood mold. It's going to cause extra problems. It's going to cause warping. Uh, it looks like there's already some cracks in a couple of beams, which it's not going to hurt anything the way that it's constructed in here, but I don't want it to continue. That might actually create a problem in the future. So I'll get everything sealed up real good. That way it's watertight and I'll finish putting in the rest of the trim, which is the rubber trim work that's supposed to go in as well as getting all the silicone put on. So that's kind of my game plan, but I am taking forever to get anything done because this is really uncomfortably painful in a lot of things that I'm working on right now. So I have to do everything in really tiny stages. <laughs> it is helping to break up my days though, because that's been the other thing is I get really stir crazy and bored throughout the day because I can't hardly do anything, but you know, 
The mind is willing, but the body can't keep up. So that'll be the next project. Not today, because I just finished doing all that wiring and my hands are sore. My back hurts from having to lean over into that corner so much. And my shoulder is screaming. So I'm just going to relax. I'm going to hang out. Uh, I am going to use the radiant heat today. One, because um, I didn't get a chance to go chop any more firewood anyway. But also because I want the radiant heat to heat up the bathroom, which is why it's in there. It'll get the whole house warm during the night. And then as soon as I'm ready to do the Thompsons, I'll shut it off, do all the Thompsons, close off that room. And then that way it can cure without the fumes being an issue. Well, it's a start. And at least that means that, uh, sorry for the glare. Um, this spot that never got touched because there used to be a mirror there. They just did the staining around the mirror and this was still bare wood. So that wasn't terrible for trying to do a color blend. In reality, I may have to put another full sheet over the top of this because if I try to put any like shelves and stuff for my sink, you know, sponges and whatnots that I want to put on this wall, um, it's too thin and it's going to actually screw into my slider door. So this may end up getting a full new sheet over the top of it just to have a little more rigidity for this wall because it's super thin. But I also got the majority, not all of it, because I'm waiting on some wood putty to arrive so that I can fill in some of the cracks and then put the sealer over the top of that because that'll help keep it from continuing to threaten to expand with the steam in the shower. I don't want the cracks getting any worse so I'm gonna put um, wood putty in there so that they're closed and then the seal over the top and that'll help keep them from doing that so bad but everything else is already sealed with the Thompson's water seal I went with the clear because the transparent which is the darker color that was on the other wall uh, was a little too dark so I went with the clear so it's actually the same green, same wood grain color as pretty much the rest of the house. Because I didn't want it to get too much darker in here. Um, but the other thing that I noticed while I was starting it is you see that spot right there? That is exactly what I'm trying to avoid. Because that is actually where mold started in that corner. And I thought I cleaned a good portion of it out. But after I put the seal on, of course, it made it darker. So I may have to go back in there with a sander to get all of that off of there as much as I possibly can and then reseal that spot. But that's exactly why I'm thinking also maybe I'm going to punch another hole right there and put another 12 volt fan. Maybe on a separate battery pack. I don't know yet because it only has that one fan right there. But it really needs something up here in this corner because that's not going to get any ventilation right there. So if I were to put another little small exhaust fan up there that goes out the wall, I could eliminate a lot of the issue with the steam right in the shower space. Knowing me, I'll probably just pull the curtains on the front of the house so nobody can see in and just leave the house open, which will help a lot to prevent any water damage also. But it's nice to have options, right? I'm the type that's really paranoid about these breaking so as soon as it was you know tacky enough dry actually this is almost there but I figured it'll dry because I'm gonna leave it alone all night long so I went ahead and put the mirrors back on the wall just so that they weren't leaning tilted up sitting there leaning in the living area but again I'm not gonna spend any more time in here because um, it needs to be well ventilated overnight so I've left two windows open, but I also left the radiant heat going so it doesn't drop in temperature too much because, of course, it's pouring outside. So try to keep the humidity low, and that way it gets a good opportunity to cure the way it needs to cure and dry, totally bone dry, before I try to do anything else with it. And it'll also ensure that when I go back and do the clear caulking to finish tacking down... Actually, I need to show you that. <clears throat> I needed to tack down where... 
the pre-existing trim work because of the moisture was starting to warp and so this has popped loose and I have another one up here that's doing the same thing so um, I need to put the clear caulking on the edges so that this stays butted up and watertight on the edge of the actual shower and tub but I already did white caulking toward the floor which is fine but anything that's going to be up in eye level is going to be transparent so that way it's not as in your face obvious that it's got more finish work done but it is definitely coming along um, I'm still debating the tankless water heater um, I think is going to go under the sink um, I believe it will fit in there but I have to look up the specs on this again and check for what the clearances need to be so that it breathes it may just go up here on the wall which is also fine I don't know what that is that wasn't there earlier but then I also have the inverter and everything to set up solar, which I haven't even begun to address. Mainly because that's all stuff that has to be done once it's in its permanent spot. I don't want to transport it, obviously, with giant solar panels on the roof. Because you run the risk of damaging everything before you even get a chance to use it. So, everything's sitting in storage. But I think, as I've been mulling over things a lot... Let me turn this one off. Turn this one on. This space is supposed to be where my all-in-one laundry machine is going to go. But I still have ample room from the top of the machine to the top of the stair, or the bottom of the stair, rather, because this is the upper landing. So I could put two shelves in there, or what is probably going to happen is all of my solar units are going to go in here, the control units, um, maybe with two extra batteries, depending on what the setup needs because I have two deep cycles on this trailer already but I, I need to have at least four so if I do that then I can put the extra two batteries here where they can be monitored and they're inside out of the weather so I'm still you know debating because the other option would be just to put the control units here but then because it's going to be sitting in a permanent spot I could have an outdoor shed right out the back door build that space specifically to house the extra batteries and just run everything else through the shed. So still playing with ideas because honestly I can't do all of the final stages until it's actually in its permanent spot. So a lot of what I'm working on right now is just the tedious little stuff, making it more comfortable, making sure the space isn't too crowded or confined, moving furniture around, moving the toilet back and forth, I still haven't anchored it to the floor because I can't decide how far away from the walls I want it to be <laughs> or how far away from the tub I want it to be. So, you know, little details like that that actually do take some finagling to figure out, especially when you when you take on somebody else's project that never really got finished. So the remodel is allowing me to put everything back where I want it to be so that it works the best for me. Um, being is that I'm not, you know, six foot four or anything, it's easy for me to have ample space of my own in a tiny space, in a tiny home, just because I am very comfortable in small spaces. Um, it's less for me to have to maintain and work on and, you know, provide maintenance for because everything's just right here. Very, very nice for me to have something like this. Um, and honestly, I've strived for a very long time with a lot of ups and downs in my life to be able to achieve this. So I really want to encourage anybody who wants to do this, who has an interest, it is not out of your price range ever. Like no dollar amount is out of your price range. Um, one way or another, this was going to happen. This is, this has been my dream since I was in college. I wanted to have this. I went through, I think, three RVs in the meantime before even getting this um, and then moved around a lot. So it, it takes some time, but once you find it and it just keeps popping up and it just keeps popping up and it just keeps, it's like the universe is telling you that's the one <laughs> and that's what happened with this one. So yes, it needs a lot of work, 
and it has gotten a hell of a lot of upgrades since I have had it. Um, you know, I replaced the entire roof myself. I've replaced electrical. I've added a second floor. I got rid of the catwalk, got rid of the ceiling fan, no vaulted ceiling. I wanted all my floor space I could get. Um, you know, I've done all of the flooring myself. I did all of the wood stove myself. Everything in here um, is me. And some of it I'm not real happy with because I was trying to be perfectionist and it didn't come out perfect. But hey, if you're going to do something DIY, it's probably not going to be perfect, but it's, it'll be something that you're really proud of because you did it yourself. <laughs> and as far as properties go, just keep looking. Um, you know, I ended up with a three acre property uh, out of Missouri and did not hardly pay that much for it. And I just kept my eyes open and wanted to find something that basically just had electricity available so that I could plug into the pole if I needed to and run my equipment that I needed to and build it up from scratch. It still has a long way to go. But, you know, I've done it in stages. I work for six to eight weeks and then I might go to Missouri or I might go to Oregon and work on the tiny home. So I've been back and forth a lot because um, the tiny home is, of course, out here in Oregon with my family on their farm so there's room to work on it and because I bought it out here um, I would really recommend if you try to get into a tiny home they're better priced if you go out east uh, same thing with property try not to stay on the west coast I was born out here and it is very expensive so a lot of this has had to be done in stages anyway just because it's you have to accumulate a little bit in the savings account before you can really launch anything so Look around. Um, the biggest thing I was into was because I wanted to switch to a composting toilet. So I didn't have to worry about a septic. And the way I don't have to worry about a septic is because it's all compostable and the property I'm on isn't unrestricted. So with the property being unrestricted, I don't have to go through all the county permitting office. I don't have to do all the jumping through hoops just to do things to my own property. and being out in a rural area in Missouri, all of your neighbors watch out for each other. All of them. And that is really the community I was looking for. So um, North Carolina is another really good place to look. Um, some places in Mississippi. As long as you're staying out of like big suburb areas and city and all of that, um, those really kind, generous, cordial, chivalrous people actually still exist. You just got to get out of the city. So of course I come out here in my bathrobe because <laughs> I wanted to check on the drying process of the sealer that I just put on everything. Which that's all dry. That's good. I hate that it left this line but that's because you know that's what was there before I did this. Still not sure if I want to cover that with a new board. Because if I put any shelving or anything on here, the minimum I would have to put like one by twos so that it had a little more depth. Because otherwise you run the risk of puncturing through and hitting the slider door. I do want to do that. So... <clears throat> Dinking around, coming out, checking, seeing how the drying's going. Because I got the radiant heater in here. And I was realizing, wow, I'm really hearing a lot of rain on that door. And I did just buy um, the door seal pad, which, of course, I just used all of it. But um, yeah, okay. So door sill pad. I had a little piece left. And this has the sticky adhesive already on it. So, you know, I came in here and I'm listening and I'm realizing I'm hearing a lot of rain. I'm hearing a lot of rain right now. I shouldn't be hearing that much rain. Because there's quite a bit of a gap right there. And I noticed it's Got a little bit of a gap over here. So 
also, while I was in here, oh, of course, I accidentally left it locked. I went in and put some more in, which the hinge side didn't really need it, but the overhead latch side and definitely down at the floor needed to have a little extra. So now it's super quiet. And I don't know if you guys have seen the deadbolt keypad thing to put on there because in reality um, Oh, this one kind of walked out, didn't it? I'm pull that up for a minute. Put it back where it's supposed to be. It came away from the seal too far. out so far. Um, but you know the keypad deadbolt locking mechanisms you've seen? They're on TikTok. They're on a lot of social media platforms right now. They seem to be the bee's knees. I've been thinking about getting one of those. Because um, the way that the French doors were done actually they were custom built for this tiny home from what I was told but it means that you don't have a key because this unit did not come with keys so nothing on the outside locks the doors don't lock the only way you can lock them is from the inside which that's fine which of course because I was outside so it locks, it's secure, but I have no way to unlock this from the outside. So I got to thinking about it that maybe, maybe, um, I got to look at the door frame a little bit better on the other one. As long as I can lock this from the inside and then still go out the back and use the keypad on the back, it should be fine. But I'm not sure if... I don't know, it's pretty narrow. Because you see how much the plate sticks out from the actual door frame? If I were to put a deadbolt here, I don't know, I have to look into it a little bit more, but I need to stop messing with it because it's raining a lot and I need that door sealed it sit proper so I'll keep it tight but then that's the other thing too is when it's raining a lot and you open that door you see how much water comes in it does have a two inch um, eave off of the metal roof that I put up but I kind of need to again once it's in its permanent spot I'm thinking I'm going to do like a whole porch along that side and that'll look off into the woods behind my house because the property drops down to the creek. So if I do a whole porch on that side, then I can do like a shed on the one end so that that door actually has another room to go into that I can put all my solar into. So it'll have the battery bank and everything in the shed, but it'll be accessible and then have another door off of the, the end of the porch that goes this way. So I still have a porch, but it's kind of like 
You see them in apartments a lot. They just got a little storage room on the back of their patio. Kind of like that. But I got to figure out, again, once I get out there to Missouri, how I want to set up as far as like maybe a lean-to with a shed included. Because the more you take apart the tiny home and you start putting foundation structure in it, it also changes your property taxes because it's a foundation home. Or right now, it's technically a manufactured home because it's on a trailer, but you take the wheels off and you can get it insured on the property as a manufactured. Kind of. So, you know, I'm trying to cover my ends, but without tinkering on it too much. Which I have a bad habit of doing with certain things. So I'm trying to be really careful with how much tinkering I've been doing that's still going to go through the insurance company properly so that once it's out there, I can get it insured. Because then, like, my dad's license is an electrician, so everything I've done in here, um, we've done, sorry, fly, as legit as possible. And I wanted to learn how to do the electrical, so... I'm kind of dad's apprentice, but he basically oversaw everything I was doing. So he would give me guidance and let me run my pace. And then if I had a question, I needed him to look at something, just double check to make sure I did it right. Then I'd have him look at it. Um, I haven't really done anything structurally to this unit. It was already structurally. It was fine. There was the only thing that I really did was um, added in the second floor so that way I could have more floor space and it was easier to get back and forth from one loft to the other. And it gives me the opportunity to set up like wall shelving on that side. So if it ever comes down to being inspected, I'm trying to keep everything as legit as possible. So if it ever needs to be inspected for anything, it is absolutely the way it needed to be. Um, the 12 volt is set up as a standard for RV. And the 120 is set up as a standard as it should be for a house because this is a house built on a trailer. <laughs> it may be smaller, but because it has dual systems, it's a little bit different for the regulations and how to do that. So for my state and where it's registered, I'm doing everything by my state. Once I move it out to Missouri, that may change a little bit. I'm hoping not by too much. But at least for where it's registered and where I'm doing all of the remodel and changes and upgrades and everything that if there were ever a question about it, they could come in and go, oh yeah, this is actually done really well. That's why it takes so long. It's a lot of effort. It is pouring, pouring, pouring really, really loud. So I hope this isn't like overrunning the audio too much because I don't have a microphone on right now. We are getting some hammer rain right now. And for Oregon, it's not like Missouri. We don't usually get the monsoon rain, but every once in a while in Oregon, we get the downpours, but they last for like a week or two. And this has been a lot of rain in the last 12 hours. But I'm super, super happy that like everything that we're doing is as on track as possible so that hopefully I don't run into any problems in the future. And if I ever decide that I want to sell this unit, um, the biggest changes was making sure that all of the electrical is getting labeled. So as I've been going through it and doing the upgrades, I've also been using my dad's handy dandy label maker and my meter so that I can check flip a bunch of breakers and switches and get everything labeled where it needs to be labeled. Right now I've got a couple that haven't been identified yet. These are my spares. That's why they're blank. But so far these two haven't been identified and supposedly they're in use for something. But I haven't been able to figure out exactly what it is yet. So. I'm still running through the electrical. I still got to test a bunch of stuff. But it's a really, really good start to make sure that the next person, if I ever choose to sell it, 
can just look at it and then also those are going to be color coded because I I've been wrapping colored tape on specific running of lines to make sure that they're identified for where they go that corresponds with the circuit breakers and the fuses. So like for instance the one that I did that I recently installed which was the toilet that one is actually wrapped in green tape because it's a composting toilet so we went green. <laughs> I went green. Um, but that way you can you can go up top and you can open up a panel and even though wires look totally chaotic a lot of the time, they're wrapped in the color that corresponds with where they are on the breaker. Makes a big difference. Super easy to maintenance that way. And I wish everybody did that, but not everybody does. And then, you know, electricians are like, oh yeah, that goes there. Okay, not everybody's an electrician, for one. And two, if you are an electrician, you would really appreciate that everything is color-coded, marked, and labeled. Because then it's a lot less rooting around and hunting for the, the solution to the issue that you might be having. That's why I'm doing that. It makes it easy for me. I might as well do that for the next person, right? Other than all of that crazy nonsense, it's really late. I know I'm rambling. I'm tired. I'm fidgety. I can't do anything else because everything's still drying. And yeah, I'm just wandering around in the middle of the night with my bathrobe on and debating on what other projects I might be able to tackle in the next couple of days. One of which I think is going to be painting the mural at the top of the stairs because I haven't done uh, the glow in the dark paint on that to complete the waterfall setup because that's new. So there's that. So stay tuned guys. Um, sorry, she's conked out. She's totally been just playing and goofing in the mud today. <laughs> it's a good thing I had her coat on. She's still white. Anyway, stay tuned for some more videos because at some point here in the near future, I am planning on doing some before and after so you can see the amount of changes that this tiny home went through. It's still got a long way to go. I've still got to paint it and do a bunch of other things on the exterior that I'm not, just not going to get to until it gets moved out to Missouri. So at least for now, I can, at some point here soon, I will show you guys exactly what went through, what it went through as far as the upgrades and improvements that I've made to it. So I hope you enjoy that. So just keep watching for it because it does take going through a lot of footage to be able to pull that together too. Catch you on the next one.